Students, one of the main questions I get in working with these complex word problems is how to tackle these problems effectively. One of the main things you want to do is learn to follow my instructions. Whenever you work with these complex word problems, I suggest you follow these steps. Step number one, you read the problem with your finger on the paper and you read aloud with your lips moving. So you actually read through the problem first. Number two, you go back and you reread the problem and then you filter, which includes underlining or highlighting all the numbers, watching for units, and keywords. Three, then you go back, reread the problem for a third time. This time, you attempt to draw the problem, you label your drawing, you make a list of information that doesn't belong in the drawing, and as you account for all your numbers, you want to physically cross things out. We're going to model these steps going through partial explanations of all the word problems of the Unit 5 Study Guide. So taking a look here on the front page of the Unit 5 Study Guide, I first need to go over a couple algebra issues. So anywhere you have empty space, please, on your study guide, anywhere, I like you to write this out as a quick review. Ready? Anywhere you have empty space or get some scratch paper out. So first thing is how to square with variables. Okay, for example, if I have x plus x, that's two x's, x times x equals x squared. I like you to write this down. So if I have three x times three x, you multiply the numbers and then the variable. 3 times 3, that's 9. X times X, that's X squared. Last one. I like you to write 2X and then parentheses square it. Whenever you have exponents, you want to expand. Exponents, expand. Very important. So 2X squared becomes 2X times 2X, which is 4X squared. This is going to come into play in one of your problems. So if you were to add, theoretically, 9x squared plus 4x squared, you only add these beginning numbers. This says I have 9 of x squared and 4 of x squared. What that gives us is I have 13 x squared, not x to the fourth, because this adding x squared is like adding x's. x plus x is 2x. 9x squared plus 4x squared is 13x squared. Okay, so that's one of the first things that you need to watch out in basic algebra. The second thing is how to add with radicals. I'd like you to write this down. Let's say I had 3 root 2 plus 4 root 2, plus 6 root 5, plus 7. Write that down somewhere. Now, when you add with radicals, it's the same thing as if you were treating these as variables. So if this was 3x plus 4x plus 6y plus 7, you'd end up with 7x plus 6y plus 7, and then you stop. That's as far as you can go. So if I were to add this, this becomes 7 root 2 plus 6 root 5 plus 7, and you are done. You cannot go any more with that because the radicals are different. So you need to be able to square with variables and add subtract radicals. Now let's go to our first question. 
You should have finished already all your Alex cycles. Problem A. Let's model these for you. Step number one in all of these word problems is when a finger track and read aloud. So ready? Put your finger right there where that red dot is. Now you're going to read that out loud to yourself. Go. Step two, you filter. Now you go back and highlight or underline all of the numbers and keywords. We're flying a kite. And the kite school is five feet off the ground. In a strong wind, the kite line is tight. The kite line is 150 feet. You have an angle of elevation from the hand to the kite at 40 degrees. Find the height or the altitude of the kite from the kite to the ground. So notice I highlighted all the numbers and key phrases. That's called filtering. Next step, you attempt to draw the diagram. You label the diagram. You list any other additional information, and then you cross items out as you account for it. Draw, label, list, cross out. Draw, label, list, cross out. So at this point, I want you to pause the video, attempt draw, label your drawing, list your given information, cross items out, all by yourself. Do not solve yet. Pause the video. Do the drawing. Let's see how you did. Watch very carefully. Whenever you have these word problems, it's important to establish where is ground. So draw a line, and I would actually get in the habit of writing the word ground. We're flying the kite, so you means there's a person involved. And that kite school is five feet off the ground. So the school that holds the kite is five feet off the ground. So there's the kite school, and that is five feet off the ground. Now watch carefully. Once I account for a piece of information, I cross it out. That tells my brain, don't worry about that anymore. I have a kite. I draw my kite up here. And it says the kite line is pulled tight. So the string through the kite is pulled tight. So from the kite school, My kite string goes to the kite, and that is pulled tight 150 feet. I check for units, it's tight, kite string. It says the angle of elevation, the angle of elevation starts at the hand. This is the only kind of tricky spot. We have an angle of elevation, and remember, by definition, the angle of elevation it starts in a horizontal and goes up. The problem is, if I start at the hand, there's no horizontal line to work with, which means you actually have to draw it in. How did I know to draw that in? Because it's an angle of elevation. And that's 42 degrees. Again, when you're done, cross it out. Our ultimate goal is to find the 
height of the kite to the ground. So our ultimate goal is from here all the way down to the ground. That is the height of the kite, also known as altitude, which creates a right angle. However, look very carefully. The right triangle we're actually working with is this one right here. Which means in working with this right triangle, this purple squiggle line is going to come into play first. We're going to call it X. Now, X is not the height, but X will come into play here. So draw label list, cross F. What you ultimately want is this red height. Draw. Label, list, cross out. Ask yourself what you can do. Show all your work. Finish the problem. Pause the video. Finish the problem. Then restart. Welcome back. Problem B. Step number one. You're going to finger track and read out loud. I'd like you to put your finger right here, right where that red dot is. I'd like you to track with your finger on the paper and read this out loud. Go. Finger track and read out loud. Did you actually read that out loud or did you read it silently? Hopefully you read it out loud. Studies show every time you read stuff over again, it increases your comprehension. Step two, we filter. So let's highlight the line keywords all numbers. Now we're your contractor and you're designing a ramp. The ADA guidelines say the angle of elevation for a wheelchair ramp should be no more in five degrees. We have two steps going in front of the home where you're building. Each step is eight inches in height. You're looking at a sheet of metal for the ramp which is 18 feet long, 24 inches wide. And if you were to buy that piece of sheet metal, you're trying to ask yourself, will this length of ramp match the ADA guideline? So remember, now we draw Label, list, cross out. Everything we do goes in the diagram or it goes on a list. Be very careful with what goes where. Starting with our basic information, the ADA guidelines that it's no more, that's American Disabilities Act, by the way, no more than five. So our actual theta is not five degrees. That's a guideline. So whatever our theta is, our angle of elevation, it has to be less than or equal to five degrees, but not more. You've accounted for that information. You cross it out. There are two steps in front of a home. Once again, establish ground. There's your ground. We have two steps. And each of those steps are eight inches in height. I cross that information out when we're done. You're looking at a ramp, sheet metal. And that sheet metal is 
18 inches long, so if you were to lay it down, that would be, excuse me, 18 feet, that would be 18 feet, and then it is 24 inches wide, which is 2 feet. So there it is in 3D, let's draw it in profile sideways. That means our ramp is like this, if we were to install it. That length is 18 feet. If you were to pull this out in 3D, it would look like this. That would be 24 inches. We're asking ourselves, if I were to buy this sheet metal, whether or not my angle here, theta, would meet ADA guidelines. Notice you have a right triangle here. I'll drop this down. Your ambition, obviously, is to find theta and see if it meets ADA guidelines. Remember that's eight inches, that's eight inches. Be very careful, this is 18 feet. Draw a label list, cross out. Pause the video, finish the problem, then move on. Problem C, finger track and read aloud. Ready? Put your finger right there. Finger track and read this with your lips moving out loud. Did you actually read out loud? You need to. Now let's go back and filter. You have a ranger. He's on an eight foot platform, 420 feet away from the sequoia. The sequoia was damaged by fire 10 years ago. The ranger is using a five foot tall surveyor's tripod and measuring an angle of elevation. A normal, healthy redwood tree grows about eight inches a year. Immediately before the fire, the tree measured 198 feet. The ranger measures the angle of elevation from the tripod to the top of the tree to be 25 degrees. Determine the current height of the tree and if it's healthy, or fire retarded its growth. Now be very careful, there's three different types going on here. Put this in the margin. There's a was height, there's an is height of the tree, and then there's what's called a should be, or what would be healthy height. Your was height is right here, 198 feet. That's the was height. Your current height is the is height. That's something we have to calculate. And then you have, you have to determine whether or not it's healthy using information about the healthy redwood tree.
Now, everything either goes on a diagram or a list. Take all this information and you work yourself through, draw, label, list, cross out. Do this on your own and then check your drawing with mine. Pause. Okay, students, welcome back. Now, it's very important. Are you actually drawing on your own or are you waiting to passively copy from me? That's not a wise choice. It's better for you to redo your drawings on scratch paper or erase if you're incorrect rather than just passively wait. That's part of the process here. Okay. Step number one, you want to establish once again where ground is. We have a sequoia tree. And this tree, there's a ranger standing on an eight foot platform, that's high, 420 feet away. So the 420 feet away from the tree. So from the tree to the platform is 420 feet. As you account for stuff, you cross it out. You have an eight foot platform. So we have some sort of platform here. And that platform from here to here is eight feet. Cross that out. It was 10 years ago that there was fire. So we're going to put that information go. 10 years ago, it was 198 feet. Damaged by fire. The ranger, so here's the ranger, using a surveyor's tripod. They have some sort of chronometer right there. And that surveyor's tripod, we are told, is five feet tall. So from here to there is five feet. Cross it out. A normal healthy redwood tree grows eight inches a year. So that's another piece of information. There's 10 years gone by. And if it's healthy now, it's eight inches per year. It says immediately before the fire was 198 feet. So that's, that's the was height right there. So it was 198 feet. Your goal is to get the actual current height and then whether or not it's healthy. Now we've got that 25 degrees to deal with. That is an angle of elevation. Remember angles of elevation start as a horizontal going up. So if we're measuring from the tripod right there, you have to draw a horizontal line. Horizontal going up, that's 25 degrees. We have a right triangle going on here. Now, you ultimately need the current height of the tree, which goes from the top of the tree all the way down to the ground. That is current height of the tree. 
problem is, before you do that, you're going to have to work with this triangle. So see the red squiggle? Call that X. X is not your height. You're going to have to figure out how to deal with X in a moment. There's your diagram. Your goal is to find the current height of the tree, the should-be height, and whether or not it is healthy. Pause the video. Finish your work. Next problem. Once again, you want to finger track and read out loud. You're going to put your finger right here where the red is. Ready? Put your finger on the paper, read out loud. Go. Step two, filter. We have here a gondola lift. It has a base station. Go to the mountaintop in four minutes. The vertical rise or the height of the mountain is 400 meters. The angle of elevation from the base station to the top is 32 degrees. You're going to find first diagonal distance from base station to summit and then calculate the speed of the gondola in meters per second. Now, right underneath the word speed, let's define the word speed in generic terms. Speed equals distance over time. That's the generic understanding of speed, distance over time. That's filter. Step three, all, label, list, crossed out. Draw the diagram, label the diagram, list the giver information, cross it out. This you do on your own. Pause the video. Welcome back. Let's see if you at least drew the diagram correctly. Once again, we have a problem that deals with ground. So we're going to start by drawing the ground. We have a base station and we have a mountain. So here's some sort of mountain. And we have a base station. We don't give a height to the base station, so that's not something we need to work with. So from the base station to the summit, the gondola moves in four minutes. So when a gondola, or gondola, however you pronounce it, this takes four minutes to travel from the base station to the summit. You should have crossed items out as you went. Base station, four minutes. The vertical rise of the mountain is 400 meters. When it says vertical, it means vertical. So your 400 meters is vertical, straight down. That's the vertical height. That implies a right angle is 400 meters. The angle of elevation from the base station, 
horizontal going up is 32 degrees. So this right here is 32 degrees. It says right here, first we want to calculate the distance from the base station to here. We want that distance. You're like, wait a minute, we already have a four there. That four is not distance, that four is time. That four is time. And if we want speed, we need distance over time. Distance over time. So our distance is going to be in X meters. Our time is four minutes. First, we want to find the diagonal distance, and then we calculate the speed in meters per second. Finish the rest of the problem on your own. Pause the video. Take a look at the next problem. Problem E. Step one, finger track and read aloud. Ready? You want to put your finger right there where the red is. Track with your finger on the paper and read this carefully out loud to yourself. Go. Next step, filter. Go back, let's highlight all numbers and keywords. When TVs are advertised, they're advertised with the diagonal length. So if you see an advertisement of a 32 inch TV that's not talking about the height or the width, that is talking about the corner to opposite corner diagonal length. So we have a 32 inch television being advertised. Your goal is to see if that 32 inch TV minus the stand will fit in that one and a half inch foot or one and a half foot space. The ratio of the width to height ratio is three to two. So think three of something or two of something. You have a one and a foot height clearance to work with, right there. You need to determine if that 32 inch TV will fit in that one and a half foot clearance. Draw additional diagrams as necessary. Ready? Draw label list, cross out. Draw additional diagram, draw label list, cross out. Pause the video, do your own drawing. Welcome back. Let's see what you did here. Okay, your goal is this, you need a television. Television is a 32-inch television, which means that from corner to opposite corner, 
you have 32 inches. Not going to worry about the stand at the moment. We're trying to see if it fits in a dorm room shelf of 18 inches. One point five feet equals eighteen inches. What do we know about the dimensions of this TV? Well, it's a three of something to two of something ratio. So this is a three to two ratio. What that means is three of something to two of something. Obviously, you need to solve for x here. So ask yourself, we have five tools to work with. Those five tools, Pythagorean theorem. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypo squared. You have 45, 45, 90. You have 30, 60, 90. You have so, ka, toa. And you have inverse. So, ka, toa. By process of elimination, you need to figure out which one of these works in this situation. Let's eliminate the obvious. It can't be a 45, 45, 90 because it implies two sides are equal. And you have a 2x, 3x. It can't be that. There's no information to give you a 36, 90. It can't be that. You don't have any angles. You can't use Sokotoa. In this case, we're not looking for angles. We're looking for side lengths. You can see what direction you're going here. And that algebra at the beginning of the video will be helpful at this time. Solve for the unknown and determine whether or not it fits on the shelf. Pause the video, do your own work. Welcome back. Problem F, step one, finger track and read out loud. Ready? Right there. Read this problem out loud with your finger on the paper. Go. All right, you should have read that out loud to yourself. Step two, filter. Underline or highlight keywords and phrases. We're told that the speed of sound is 340 kilometers per second. We're stationed at a ground level neighborhood. An unidentified antenna is flying at an altitude of 4,000 meters to original sweep with an angle of elevation of 10 degrees. After exactly one minute, the radar station reveals that a plane is moving towards the radar station at the same altitude. But now at an angle of 58 degrees. Why would the angle increase? Because it's closer. Maintain the same altitude. There's two questions here. Calculate the speed of the unidentified air meters per second, then determine if it's traveling faster than speed of sound. Why is it important? 
because if it is traveling slower than the speed of sound, you could hear the airplane coming. If it's traveling faster than the speed of sound, you will not hear the airplane coming through the radio station. That's an important tactical understanding. Ready? That's called filtering. Now, step three. Attempt to draw a diagram, label your diagram, list your given information, and cross it out as you go. Do the drawing on your own. Then check. Pause. Come back. Let's see how you did here. So we start by establishing ground. Always establish ground. You have a ground level radar. Now the speed of sound, that's going to go on your list because that is not part of the diagram. The speed of sound is 343 meters per second. That is the speed of sound. Now we have a base station. It's going to write here, and it's ground level, so you can imagine it's like a bunker. It's going to write the word base. You have an airplane flying towards that base station. So here's your airplane flying towards the base station. Ground level radar, airplane. And the altitude it's flying at is 4,000 meters. So altitude always creates a right angle. So hopefully you drop that straight down. 4,000 meters. Now, after one minute, that plane keeps flying. That's a really important concept. For one minute, that plane keeps going forward for one minute, which is 60 seconds. So the plane has changed. And now, after one minute, the plane has changed positions. It is still 4,000 meters in altitude. It says right there, same altitude twice. Our original angle of elevation means when you swept the first spotting of the airplane is 10 degrees. The second spotting of the airplane, we're at 58 degrees. That's overlapping, 58 degrees. Now we want speed. Once again, speed equals distance over time. We have the time already. One minute. What we don't have is the distance. This distance is going to be this right here, which is the same as this down here. Your job is to figure out how to find that pink distance. Hint, you have two overlapping right triangles. I suggest you pull them apart. Pause the video, attempt to do the work, and then restart. Problem G.
Ready? Step one. Finger track and read aloud. Finger right there. Start reading out loud. Now, step two, filter. We have special right triangles, 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90. Find the measure of each variable in simplified radical form. We want to find the perimeter of A, B, C, D. Let's physically trace that. The perimeter of A, B, C, D. So that quadrilateral, we want to find the perimeter. Be prepared to explain how you found the length of each perimeter. Let's first write out our charts. 45, 45, 90. Leg, 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 root 2. 45, 45, 90, the legs are equal. Hypos, whatever the leg is, times root 2. 30, 60, 90, short leg, short leg root three, short leg times two. In simplified radical form, you want to first start with the 30, 60, 90. So we're looking right here, 30, 60, 90. For W, we're going to box that. So W going this way times the long leg. To the long leg is times root 3. And going this way, it's times by 2. And the 30, 60, 90, you always start with the short leg. And 45, 45, 90, the legs are equal. So over here, whatever you find W, you automatically have this. And you times that by root 2. So to get yourself started, right here, it reads like this. Something times root 3 is 7. Or something is a fraction. Find your something. Pause the video. Restart when you're done. You can look here. Next problem. You start by finger track and reading out loud. Very important that you are reading out loud. Finger track and read out loud. Put your finger right there. Start reading. Step two, go back, filter. So it says right here we have an equal left triangle PQR, a square PQRS. The share side PR. The point of PR is M. We're going to draw an altitude point from QM to the right hand. The length of QM is 6. Knowing this information, find the length of the diagonal of the square TR in simplified radical form. Filter. Step 3. Draw 
label your drawing, list your Ginfin information, cross out as you go. Do this on your own, then check your work. Pause the video. Welcome back. Let's check your work. Ready? One step at a time. We have an equilateral triangle P, Q, R. That means all three sides are equal. If you know all three sides are equal, you automatically know all three angles are equal, which makes them all 60, 60, 60. P, Q, R. You cross stuff out as you account for it. Sits on top of a square, P, R, S, T. Notice the P and the R again. That is the same as the P, R over here. So P, R. And then you keep going the same direction. We're drawing ourselves a square. The R, that has to be S, yes, that has to be T. So square, so we have right angles. And all four sides are equal. They share a side PR. Make sure you pay attention to details says they share that side PR, which is the case. The midpoint of PR is M. So there's an M here. Double hatch because it's a midpoint. An altitude segment is drawn from Q to M. Altitude means vertex right angle. And that is going to be six centimeters. Knowing this, we want to find the length of the diagonal of the square, TR. That is your ultimate goal. We'll call that X in simplified radical form. Pause the video and finish. Last problem. Step one, get a track and read out loud. Put your pencil right here. Finger at me. Read this out loud. Go. Now, we actually have the drawing. We're going to filter key information. First off, all the outer edges are congruent and they meet at right angles. That's the definition of a key. You have segment DP is the diagonal of that square. And PC is the diagonal of the cube, not cubs. From P to C. You are told that A to B is 6, which is an outer edge. Knowing that, you want to find the perimeter of this triangle right here. This triangle, D, P, C. You want to find the perimeter of this triangle. It's in three dimensions. In simplified, Radical form. Pause the video. Your own work. 
check your answers in the classroom.